Well, hi folks, it's Kevin here again. I'm out on the trail. I'm going to an island called Colasunti. Um, it's in the middle of Teo National Park and I've been here before. It's the one where you get across to the island on a rope ferry. I have a new tent to try out. It's called uh, the Yun Chuan two-person tent. Let's uh, get to the place and uh, let's get set up first. Unusually for me, I'm out camping on a Friday evening. Um, the evenings have had a nice stretch in them now, so it doesn't really get dark until about 10 o'clock, half past 10. So I figured I'd have enough time to finish work, go home, have some food and pack, and then head out. It's uh, currently about quarter to nine in the evening. So uh, yeah, we're definitely getting into proper summertime. Speaking of which, the temperatures all this week have been in the high teens and low twenties. And today actually it was 24 degrees. So uh, yeah, it's quite nice. And uh, another nice thing about coming out camping late is that, uh, yeah, I don't have to sweat too much. Things are starting to cool down quite nicely. The only downside of course is that uh, as the evening cools, of course, so do the mosquitoes come out. But um, so far there haven't been that many. So here we are at the campsite. There is a lava and some other camping spots on the other side of the island, but there's quite a few people there already. So I'm going to set up here, which is a little bit farther away. Next job now is to try and unpack the Yun Chuan two person tent and uh, set it up. Okay, well, the fly is up. It wasn't too difficult. I put the ground sheet out first, but it didn't seem to match the actual shape of the tent itself. Um, Maybe it matches the inner better. But uh, yeah, the, the poles are currently set to 135 millimeters. And uh, yeah, the fly is actually quite taut. So it's uh, looks quite, quite good. You know, there's lots of tie-out points, which is nice. The only thing that's a bit concerning is that at 135 centimeters. The fly on this side is really far up off the ground and in other places it's back practically touching the ground. So uh, I mean it's a bit odd. But I guess I can adjust that so that the, in principle the side can be lower that's facing into the wind. There's no there is no wind tonight so it's not really a problem. Um, yeah, overall quite nice and content. It's uh, this nice woodland brown color. Uh, on each side, of course, as well as the air vents. And it's sort of like a stiff a wire or a piece of carbon fiber or something inside it. And it velcros to the to the outside. So, and there's mesh then on the inside just there. Uh, currently, I have my tracking poles point down, so points into the ground, and the handle is in the apices of the of the tent. Um, I'll have to see basically whether this is correct or not but um, at least at 135 centimeters there isn't too much of a sag between the two poles. I have heard from other YouTube videos that uh, the fly has been touching the inner and that's the place where it happens along that, that portion of sag between the two two poles. So I managed to get a tent up but it's uh it's quite a faff. I'll see you in the morning 
and I'll show you the tent then. So for now, good night. Cheers. Well, I slept quite well last night. Woke up a few times with bird sounds. There were swans mating and calling on the lake. And then there was a cuckoo calling. But uh, it's actually quite a pleasant sound. Even though there were quite a few people here last night, people pretty much went to bed by 10 o'clock and there was no sound from people after that, which is really nice. Putting the tent together was a bit of a faff after all. The fly was easy. Getting the uh, ground sheet and the inner set up properly took me a while. I put the ground sheet in the wrong way around and upside down. And it's, uh, it's not square. It's sort of a tra trapezoid shape. And then the floor of the inner, of course, is the same shape. So I think I put that in the wrong way around as well the first time. But I got it sorted out. But yeah, all in all, loads of space loads of space i could get my rucksack and everything inside the tent with me and the vestibules were completely clear so that was a, amazing there is a lot of space in places between the fly and the inner and i think if you want to avoid the inner touching the fly you've got to be fairly careful about actually how you position it inside the tent the only real references you have to the fly are two clips that hook each side by the poles. So yeah, that will probably require some practice. Um, one nice thing about the tent also is that there are loads of tie out points. So there's one here on the side. This might also be an option for keeping the inner from touching the fly. It's uh, yeah, gonna be interesting trying to get the, learning how to tweak this thing so that I can uh, if necessary, bring the fly sheet down closer to the ground. Yeah, given the space and the size of the vestibules and the fact that it only weighs 1.4 kilos, uh, yeah, I'm very happy with it so far. Okay, so all packed up, ready to go. Leave no trace. Yeah, this is a super spot. I'm definitely going to have to come here again. Okay, so I just took the ferry across to the other side of the lake. And now we're going to continue on the Sahayarvi Trail. It's about eight kilometers. So, uh, yeah, let's go. Oh, it's hot. It's forecast today for 25 or 26 degrees. In uh, Finland, there's a word for when the temperature goes over 25 degrees. It's called hell. And uh, even though it's that hot, it's nothing to do with hell. It just means that, yeah, the air temperatures have hit 25 degrees or over. Glad there are shady, shady bits. I'm sweating a bit already. Oh, oh, okay. Now I've got an uphill across bedrock, so it's gonna get uh, it's gonna get hot up here. But uh, ooh, last time I was here, it was snowing, and uh, there was about 20 centimeters of snow. So uh, yeah, right now it looks very different. Beautiful in its own way. Yeah, this is another example of glacial erosion. See how smooth the stones are, almost like they've been polished. The glacier has basically moved over these stones and then uh, smoothed them and polished them. This is made all the more impressive when you think that in the last ice age, at least a kilometer of ice above or 
more on top of where I'm actually walking now. I'm back in a nice wooded stretch again. It's very pleasant to be in the shade after being out on the top of the hill in the full glare of the sun. But, uh, the light and shadow underneath the trees is absolutely beautiful. And uh, especially now that the leaves are finally starting to come on the trees fully. So uh, the landscape is greening up beautifully. I came through here for the first time about two years ago and uh, there was about 10 centimeters of snow and when I went through these uh, close by these pine trees I got snow down the back of my neck uh, given these temperatures a little snow down the back of my neck would be quite welcome now I have to admit oh well I keep going There's been some controversy about this Yun Chuan tent that it's a copy of a Dan Durston's X-Mid uh, by Ali AliExpress. Okay, I mean, there's different points of view about whether it's a straight copy or whether indeed it's just a variation on the theme. And I have heard that there was also a trekking pole uh, asymmetric tent that Dan was influenced by as well. So, uh, right, let's talk facts. Is the Dan Durst in the better tent? Probably. Yes. Is it better materials? Yes, more than likely. Has it been better thought out and planned? Yes. So what's, why did I choose the Yun Chuan over the Dan Durston this time? Well, simple answer is cost. Uh, the price of the Durston tent, if you live in the States, is very reasonable for what it is. In fact, I would say it's a bargain. However, if you want to import a tent like that to Finland, where I live, then uh, yeah, you gotta pay import duties, customs, etc. Effectively doubling the cost. Um, so currently I'm not willing to pay uh, the cost of effectively two Dan Durston X mid tents. So hence I chose the one from Alibaba. I wanted to try a trekking pole tent two person that I will use every now and again or for my wife to use with our dog. So it's not like it's going to be getting a huge amount of use and uh, at some stage if they become more cheaply available in Europe or I can get my hands on a second hand one then that's what I'll do. When I first posted that I bought a Yun Xuan two-person tent on my community page on my YouTube channel, I was called a communist. You keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. I think basically this person doesn't know what a communist is or what a communist ideology is about. Uh, I think it's more capitalist to have a market where the buyer can use their hard-earned cash to pay for whatever the hell they want to buy and uh, it's nobody's business one way or the other. Uh, would I prefer to support a small cottage industry like Durson over Ali AliExpress? Yeah sure of course I would but not at that price and it simply comes down to that it's my money I'll spend it how I want. So okay rent over. Okay, so I'm quite close to the end of the trail, so I think I'll finish here. Yeah, I hope you enjoy this video and learn something about the Yun Chuan tent. You can decide basically if you wanted to go for that or go for the Durston. That is entirely your choice. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed otherwise the, the nature here in Finland. And uh, yeah, with a bit of luck, I'll catch you on the next trail. So this is Kevin. Signing off from the Sahayarvi Trail. All the best. Moi moi.